seconds till we're back, everybody. Tons of energy coming back Wait, out of the yes, commercial yes, break. Yes, New Day yes. in the ring, and they're waiting oh. on Bobby Lashley and MVP. Coming back in eight, seven, six. Tons of energy coming back out of commercial break. Yes. Three, two, one. Here we go. It is Let's see that energy out is there. A new day. New day. Yeah, there we go. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom, and I haven't made a video like this in a while, mainly because I've been really busy. Um, I just got off doing the Welcome to Rockville here at Daytona Beach. Been working forever, it seems. Um, so yeah. It's time to get back to doing videos. And let's see here. Actually, there's a lot of stuff. Because towards the end of October, there were some things I missed. Because I think... Oh, wow. Does this go back? Oh, yeah. Shoot. Oh, no. It doesn't... Well, yeah. Almost end of October. But let's talk about what I missed. Let's see here. It was, for the most part, Bound for Glory and Crown Jewel. Yeah, because I did a lot of work between then and now. And... I just couldn't, I just, I think I just honestly forgot to mention that. So let's see here. Whoa, who's that? Oh, that's a cheese pie. Um, for Bound for Glory, I'll tell you what, I was pretty good. I was seven out of eight matches. I think I got the match of the night right. Oh, yeah, El Fantasmo. You can never blame me for that. The Stone Cold Lock. Ah, for the most part, I got that right. Oh, but the snooze, that was awesome, though. Oh, uh, the Battle Royal was so fun. I think... Oh, wait a second. The Battle Royal is the only thing I got wrong. Wow, do you know how hard it is to predict that? Oh, no, I got two wrong. Yeah, six out of eight, I'm sorry. Six out of eight. That's still not bad, though. Yeah, it's just that and the... Uh, three way for the exhibition belt that I got wrong. No, wait, how many did I got wrong? Wait a second. One, two, three, five, six. I got three wrong. So, yeah, I still got six out of nine, nine right. That's actually pretty good. You want six out of nine? That sounds like I'm in the head of one Stephanie McMahon Helmsley. Crown Jewel I did not do so good in. I think I only got four out of nine. Oh man. That just makes me a mark. I think the main reason for that was mainly because I figured there would be a couple title changes. There weren't any. Atlas is done with. Good. Um, yeah, might as well talk about this list too since, since I'm doing this now. I did not get to see most of the matches for full gear. But I think my only my up and coming gripe about AEW they are becoming very predictable. When I can predict 9 out of the 10 matches that they had, or 8 out of 9, well, I think we had a pre show. So I don't even know what happened to that one. Or that was the buy in, whatever they call it. But I got 9, I say I got 9 out of 10 right, though. Oh, did I get 9 out of 10 right? Yeah. Or 8 out of 10 right? With the Stone Cold Lock and the Snooze and the Match of the Night, right? So, yeah, 9 out of 10, right? You know what that means? Not a perfect 10 out of 10, but maybe for future considerations, I'm definitely in the mind of one Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Or, wait, no, 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 Paul Levesque.
And I'll throw this out. One less list to deal with because I have to make two more this week. Um, so with all that done, wait a second. I have a bunch of sticky notes here. You know what sticky notes mean. Sticky notes means thank you to all the people that have watched or commented someone on my show. Let's see. I need to save these. Scorpio King. You, sir, win twice because you get that six count. Will Rallis for Rally. This is the last time you make this list because next time you say something to me, oh, there goes the hobo cat. You shall be in the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League because you, sir, just got tossed. See Higgy. Oh, you made this list twice, but you only get one shout out though. So see Higgy, you're a master the air guitar.
Toot Blam. You used to her just rocking around with your briefcase boombox. What do you want? Do you want to come up here and help me? Nope. Ooh, there we go. There's something. Regal Mahinama. You, sir, can crawl out of here. The Stout Gobbler. You, sir, always managed to win by dirty pin somehow. Soul, you remember the El Generico Band. Oh, here we go. Blinda Ramsey's. Thank you very much for your comment. She actually, Blinda Ramsey's, actually sent me an email. I'm in May. I, haven't, I don't check my emails that often, so I saw it. I responded to her a little bit about what she wanted to know. Actually, let's see her. Go to her email. So, so you guys can always see a little insight as to what you can always send me via Gmail. They're at hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. Which again, the address should be listed somewhere on one of these web pages. I always forget where. Oh, my monthly newsletter is here. Good copyright claim, copyright claim. Ah, eh. AdSense. Eh. Let's see where, where was hers? Hers was May. June, July, June, June. Change the service, copyright claim. Oh, there we go. She had general questions. I did respond to them. I'll also respond to you guys here. Uh, let's see here. Watching YouTube, I noticed there were several doing shows about wrestling. Yep. Oh, wait. That was my response. Oh. Dear Hobo Tom, good evening. I'm Linda, one of the... One of our, you've had... While scrolling through your wrestling videos... I came across your channel. Me. And realized who you were and wanted to reach out to you and ask a few questions. What inspires you to post YouTube videos? One, um, I'll say this very shamelessly. I do it. I did it trying to make money. Um, I saw others doing shows like JT from NC, Luge, uh, Steve Heron Larson. Uh, there's Wrestling with, with Regret, uh, Cultaholic, uh, What Culture. A whole bunch of people did wrestling videos. Uh, Conman167, I'll, I'll throw his name out there too, I realized that somehow they were making money off of it. In fact, people were paying Conman167 to get drunk. They could pay me to get drunk. Wait, wait a second, I do that for free. But that's okay. Um, so I've been a wrestling fan for a while. I figured it could, could be an additional source of income. It finally became more of a hobby. But at the time, I noticed very few couples did wrestling shows. I figured I could give it a try with my girlfriend, see what happened for fun, and, and as an additional source of income. There. Next question. Are you and the girlfriend referenced in your name still together? No, we are not. Um, at the time, years ago, she wanted to get married, have kids, have me leave my job, live in a 500 square foot apartment, Instead of this amazing house that I live in, no matter what Dr. Tom calls it, it's, it's not a hovel, it's a nice house. 
and leave my job, leave my income, move in with her, get her pregnant, and have two adults, a child, and a cat living in a 500 square foot apartment, and me with no job. No job means no insurance either. And I said, no, this sounds bad. So we broke up. Um, I kept the fishing stuff. I gave her back her stuff, and I gave her her fishing shoes. So yeah, that was it. Are you married? Very simple, no. But I'm looking. Uh, if you know, uh, if any of you know, or are hot women over the age of 40, I'm your man. Um, let's see here. But no, I am not married. Uh, let's see here. And finally, what are your thoughts on the fact that every single day we inch closer to our inevitable deaths and, and that no amount of en entertainment or fleeting pleasure can hide the fact that we will all die? Let's see here. So you know what? Um, oh, also, yeah. I know we were not to So to go back to the married question. No, we were not together. You can see on previous videos. Every so often we do a friend's co-host the show. And three, not no, not married. Four. You have to go out knowing that you tried. You lived your life, a good clean, a good clean life, the way you wanted to. Take inspiration from the Frank Sinatra song, "My Way." Some other musical quotes: "My life, it's all I have to give. If I can't die, I'm never gonna live." Um. You really just can't, like. Be depressed. Life is too short to be depressed. Honestly, if you have a computer and are watching wrestling videos, there's no need for you to be to be depressed. One, you're probably way too young to be depressed. You get depressed when you get my age. You realize that you have a crap job, um, no wife. But yeah, for some reason, I'm still happy. I have a little pleasures in life. I have my cat who roams around here. brings me a lot of joy. I go fishing a lot. brings me a lot of joy. Work brings me money, which is good. And you know what? If you can't feel some kind of entertainment or fleeting pleasure from, from very simple things, I don't know. That's definitely not good. So let's see. So that was that. So you know what? All that stuff. You need a tag team partner. And Nikki Cross is a perfect tag team partner for you. And then David Maldonado, thank you. David Maldonado from Puerto Rico. You know what, sir? You know that Jordan Grace, she definitely has back. Oh my God, Becky, look at her back. I like big butts and I cannot lie. So with all that being said, let's see, let's move that microphone a little bit closer. So I can adjust the stuff here. So now, with all that that said, wait a second. Do I feel a musical overture coming? Maybe. Baby. 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 Yes! Let's go back in time, baby! Baby, oh, my soul, baby, oh, I'm a baby, sweet baby, you're the one. So yes, let's go back in time ourselves. Let's go back. Let's see here. To 
November 1st. Whoa. So let's go back to November 1st a little bit. And see, you can just close that. Less my computer has to do. <laughs> less, less I'll be breaking it. So these are a whole bunch of Raws. So again, if you folks were actually paying attention to the title. Yes, yeah, so this is a three for one special. You get nine hours worth of Raw compressed probably into about just one hour. So if you've been hiding under a rock or working, I've been. Here's a very quick recap of everything that's happened on Monday Night Raw. Uh, starts off. 11 1 2021. There we go. That's a pretty cool reverb. So that means I have to lower that volume. But yeah. Um, let's see here. Show start off. Uh, Becky Lynch was yapping away. Bianca Belair comes out, challenges her. Then, yep. And then we have Match. I think this was one of those days I just said, you know what? I'm, oh, I think. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, I just roll out of bed for this, I think. I took a nap that day because I had off. But yeah, um, with this, it was Bianca versus Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch looks skinnier than she used to. She used to have a little tum-tum on her. I like women with tummies. It means they're healthy, on natural. Becky Lynch is like way too thin. Dude, Becky Lynch had her kid and lost weight somehow. I don't know how she did that. Like, no stretch marks either. Although she does have mommy nipples. I'll get into that later, though. Um, so it's Bianca versus Becky. Becky learned the Juju Katami. Uh, I learned to transition from that into the triangle. A little reference to, to, to Rampage Jackson back in the day for MMA fights. Uh, Bianca did the grill slam on her. Becky, Becky's pantyhose ripped. That still gets me giddy when I see women's pantyhose ripped. Yeah, you can always do woo, 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 all over the place. And there was a pump handle slam, but uh, or the manhandle slam that Becky Lynch did. Bianca got her foot on the rope though, too, too close there. Uh, Becky got sent in, into the table. Then there was the ex then Becky Lynch pulled the turnbuckle, pat off, shoved Bianca face first into the turnbuckle, into a roll up. And with the tights, yeah, that seems right for a heel win. Becky Lynch won. Cheeseburger of a match. Then we had Ray and Dominic Mysterio. And now Ace Austin wants his selfie with them. We all know what happens when Ace Austin wants... Uh, not, not Ace Austin. Austin Theory. Jeez. I'm all kerfuffled. Yeah, that's Austin Theory. Oh, wow, just three pages. Three pages, ten minutes. I got it. This led to a match between Austin Theory versus Rey Mysterio. Why doesn't Dominic just steal his cell phone and, like, run away and cause, like, the super distraction like that? Uh, Rey flies. He does the Hurricane. Great Fisherman suplex. Austin Theory stretches. Rey Mysterio, that's pretty cool. And to the top rope they go. Uh, Rey slides through the Hurricane into the ring post. But it's a DQ. We gotta throw the dust to finish, baby. Austin Theory wins. Because he's smart in the head. Because that, that boy, that boy needs to learn the, the rule of the wrestling. Dominic Mysterio slapped him. And the referee said, hey, I'm right here. No, you can't do that. Ring the bell, match over. Austin Theory, you're the winner. Take your trophy, get out of here, you bum. Um, so yeah, that was pretty interesting. Sets up this whole thing with him and Austin Theory, and we'll see that grow a little bit. So hey, they're de they're planting the seeds, and they're developing stuff. Well, that's rare for something WWE to do. So that's pretty cool. On uh, this match, it was a death to ham sandwich, though. Uh, then we had a Seth Rollins promo. Yeah, I didn't care much about that. Then we had the Women's Tag Team Champion, 
Uh, Nikki Glenn Cross, because I refuse to call her Nikki almost a superhero. No, she's Nikki Glenn Cross. Will always be Nikki Glenn Cross to me. Hopefully someone slaps that mask off her face and we get the real Nikki Glenn Cross. And Rhea Ripley taking it on Selena Vega and Carmella. Bad idea, Carmella. Uh, you slapped Rhea Ripley. That was really it. Um, Rhea Ripley got sent into the post. This was a quick match. This was a weird match. I don't have that many notes, which means I probably went to the bathroom during this match. It probably ended quickly and oddly. Zelina Vega and Carmella won. My notes are just like, yeah, bad idea, Carmella. She did something stupid. Rhea got sent to the post. That probably cost a roll-up victory. Yeah, you know what? <sighs> Only because they had a stupid gimmick with Nikki Glenn Cross. It's going to be a can of soup. Little thing then backstage with Chad, Otis, and Big E. Uh, Finn Balor was taking on Chad Gable. Classic wrestling start. This was actually a really good match. This was probably hour number two. It was a good, good wrestling start. Chad, Chad Gable's so good. Versus the double throat, the, the oh, cross throat chops. It's good to see again. Starman did that in pro wrestling years ago for the Nintendo system. Just great to see the flying cross throat chop. Uh, then there was an ankle lock by him, and then and stomps. So always good to see to the leg, which is great. Again, targeting one limb that you know is compromised. Again, Chad Gable's suplex combos. Finn gets the roll up from the suplex, kind of quick. That was weird. Um, Finn Balor wins. It was a cheeseburger match. And there was Matt Riddle and the Dirty Dogs backstage. And yeah, no one cares about that. Then it was the Street Profits versus the Dirty Dogs. Um, Rude and Ford start off. Great technical wrestling. Great bro. Great bro. Great rope running. That's what I meant to say the first time. Again, by both Montez Ford and uh, Robert Rude can do that. Dolph Ziggler. They're all athletic enough. They're so good, so nimble. Then there was the... Then there was action in front of the table. Ford goes flying. Then Omos shows up. Omos is kind of pissed off at people. Um, Dolph pins Ford. kind of like a weird way uh, Real then comes in because Omos just wants to beat up the street prof profits Real comes in and he gets gorilla pressed for his efforts this was fun it was a good solid match I mean Robert Roode and Dolph Zig Robert Roode by himself is a technically gifted and amazing pro wrestler Dolph Ziggler gets a little cartoonish with his cells but his style matches well I guess with Montez Ford his cartoonish shit um Dawkins is a little bit more serious, so it kind of balances out everything. Solid cheeseburger match. Then there was Damien Priest versus T Bar. Um, I think I don't know. I, I think I started clean up stuff. But yeah, they fight mainly on the outside. The table table gets set up. Uh, there's a Super Simone drop, which is always good to see. The Broken Arrow for only a two count. These two. Sweet. Ooh, I'll set that up for another video, actually. Yeah. Oh, I could do that tomorrow morning, too. Yeah, I have, I have plans. Um, T-Bar then. Again, he obviously does not know the rule of tables. T-Bar, listen, Donovan Dijakovic, if you set up the table, you are going through said table. Damian Priest then hits his big finisher on him. Yeah, Damian, Damian Priest wins. Good enough fun match. Cheeseburger match. Then 
John Morrison is found still meditating somewhere. Uh, Becky Lynch. Yeah, she changed. She changed. I just put it down. She actually changed her outfit and was doing an interview. Whatever. And there's Seth, Seth and KO backstage. Then we go to Big E versus Kevin Owens. Kill Steen Kill. Um, good classic power pro wrestling match. A lot of trash talking. Big E can talk trash. Kevin Steen is one of the best trash talkers ever. Uh, KO does get caught in the big belly to belly suplex. KO just the eye rake and the weakest Canadian headbutt ever. Canadian headbutt. Boo! Boo, Canada! Um, Big E missed the spear then with a KO cannonball. There was no sense on Big E. got the knees up. Big E eventually did hit the big splash and the big ending on Kevin Owens. Big E wins. Retains his championship. Solid cheeseburger match. So that was it from... There we go. Hopefully this shirt stays up longer so you can see my amazing Macho Man shirt that I do enjoy so much. So let's hear it. So let's go back to... Back, well, I won't play the music again. Too, too many music montages ruined the video. Let's go to... November... 8th, 2021. So again, all my thank yous out. Is this a short show? Yeah, three pages of notes. And I think I got caught this a little bit late. Um, so we have RK Bro and the Street Profits. They, they come out, they, uh, Street Profits cut a promo. Of course, that's going to bring out AJ and Omos, the Dirty Dogs are there, and then RK Bro shows up. So we have an eight-man tag, and naturally... Or a pre-made, whatever. Eight-man tag team match. It's RK Bro and the Street Profits. Taking on AJ and Omos and the Dirty Dogs. Uh, Rudin Ford start. Such a classic start. Montez Ford. Again, those uh, the taunting push-ups in, in front of Dolph Ziggler. Again, supposedly a collegiate... Well, actually was a collegiate wrestler. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, he gets worked over with... a. The, the Randy Orton stomps to all the extremities. Randy Orton's still good with that. Uh, Real his assisted, I don't know, spinning spiral tap. That looked amazing, though. AJ Styles has to bring the spinal tap for, like, one big match. His his big farewell match, he has to hit the spinal tap again. Um, there was no Styles Clash. Riddle was fighting on that. And ouch! Riddle has an awkward fall. Riddle has a lot of awkward moments. I don't know if they're botchy moments. Or if they're just, like, awkward-looking. Because some th sometimes wrestlers do things that looks awkward, and it's like, they, like, get up and bounce up, bounce up from it. Like, if I hit one of those awkward moments, I'd probably break my neck. Or collarbone, or something worse. What's worse than breaking your neck? Yeah, killing myself. Yeah, that would be pretty bad. Breaking my skull. I'm pretty sure a broken skull <laughs> equals death anyway. So, yeah, you would see me die in the ring if I did any of those awkward things. It does it all the time, though. It bounces up from it. Maybe there's something to what he smokes. I don't know. I don't even want to get into that. I'll get into that once I get my Metallica shirt. And i show you guys what happened at Rockville. Because I saw everything. And some things I can never unsee. Yeah. Getting pissed on. That's, that's disgusting. Oh, yeah. I, I digress. But you can watch that on YouTube, by the way. And she apologized. She's banned for life. Who knows? Um, yeah, Rude again. Oh, still the best spine buster ever. Uh, Orin has a draping DDT on Dolph. Rude sends him to Omos. Then we see Omos versus Orin. That's great. Uh, Dolph cannot hit, hit the Famouser, though. Dawkins gets a hot tag. The butterfly neck breaker. That looks beautiful. Uh, Rel tags in. Got tagged in a hard slam. Uh, Randy then held back by Ziggler and Rude. The heels fighting with the tag. Rude got sent to the barricade by Omos. Ziggler eats an RKO. But that doesn't matter because Matt Riddle, I think one of the Street Profits gets, gets pinned by 
by AJ Styles. So you know what that means. That's pretty good. This is going to continue a little bit. But Omos, AJ Styles, and the Dirty Dog Lynn. Solid cheeseburger match. Uh, the Mysterios and Kale are backstage. And Adam Pierce gets... What? You know what? 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 He gets sweated. So he's good to see. Um, because... He says Dominic's not qualified. He's the one person who's never been a champion. We need champions. So then we have Dominic, and he's going to be replaced. <laughs> Dominic has to fight for his spot by this former champion, Bobby Lashley. Oh, yeah. You know how this goes. This ain't pretty, folks. Uh, Dominic Mysterio versus Bobby Lashley's next. Lashley just works over Dom. Um, he's in the herd lock. He wouldn't let him tap. He just throws him around. Just... Again, Dom uh, Bobby Lashley just has his way with poor Dom Mysterio. Dominic tries, doesn't doesn't matter. Uh, Bobby Lashley back in the ring hits a spear, then the hurt lock. It's the glorified squash, but Bobby Lashley makes these squashes look so good. This is a cheeseburger squash match. Actually, this was pretty good. And then we had Big E versus Chad Gable. Again, good classic wrestling match. Very technical. Uh, Big E, more, more of a brawler in this match. Um, again, Ch Chad Gable goes after the hamstring. Again, you always work over the bigger guy's legs. It's kind of the old trope in wrestling. Uh, let's see here. Again, Ch Chad needed to go. He has a short moonsault. Chad Gable, you know what? They make fun of his height, but he does have to get a little more distance than moonsault. I mean, he does roll up, and he did a roll up avalanche German suplex, which was amazing. I think he cheats when Otis got involved. Chad Gable, I think, wins this match. This was fun, though. Otis gets involved. Cheeseburger match. KO's talking to R-Truth. R-Truth is like, whatever. Boo! Sonya Deville segment next. Boo! Boo Sonya Deville. Always boo Sonya Deville. And Adam Pierce in the women's locker room. What's Adam Pierce doing in the women's locker room? No, have Sonya Deville there. Just have him give him a six woman orgy or something. Oops, I shouldn't be saying that. But yeah, I don't know. It's, it's what it is. Uh, then we have Reggie taking on Drake Maverick in a real match. Ready? You can do. You can do basic wrestling moves. He's obviously learned something besides parkour. Um, the hurt business become a distraction, and it just became a series of roll ups. So I'm just gonna not grade every roll up. It's just a roll up. Not that special. Um, so this is for the 24/7 championship, and I will clean you up, you fuzz butt. Uh, so on the outside, Tazawa gets a roll up. Corey Graves gets the roll up on Tozawa. Byron Saxon becomes a 24 7 champion for a short time until he gets rolled up by Reggie um, or by Drake Maverick. And then Drake Maverick does some like twisting, splash thing, which looked great. Reggie retains his belt. The whole 24 7 thing. This was a little bit better. Uh, mainly because Byron Saxon says, Yeah, I beat you, Corey, for a belt. Ha <laughs> ha. So, I'll give it a ham sandwich. Little Becky Lynch segment there backstage. And Drew Dot Drew Dot oh, Drew Drew Dup and Bianca Belair. Whatever. Then we had our women's five way. Oh yeah, that's right, the women's five way orgy. No, five way match. The Fatal Five went not the Five Woman Orgy. Well, that would have been better. Didn't hear that from you, though. It was Bianca Belair versus Carmella versus Liv Morgan versus Lena Vega versus Rhea Ripley. Uh, for some reason, this was just weird. Uh, Carmella... <laughs> Carmella... Carmella's boobs are too big for her outfit because she keeps on popping out of them. So, yeah. 
Canelo's boobies cannot be contained by any known fabric. She's getting up there on the, on the nip slip kind of thing. And just things breaking, which is utterly hilarious. <laughs> Watch your bra just break in the match. <laughs> That's hilarious. Although, based on what I saw at Rockville, not too far-fetched. Serious. Only Rhea and, and Bianca get in the ring. Everyone else is kind of like out there. You have the big old test of strength. That's great. Uh, Rhea then drop kick Carmella. Vega did the chop block to Rhea. Liv, for some reason, can't get back into the ring. We don't see Liv really until the end of the match. Uh, Carmella. Carmella has a set of lungs on her. Uh, Rhea just, for the most part, tosses poor... Selena Vega is so tiny. Selena Vega literally comes up to, like, Rhea Ripley's breast. It's really scary to see how tiny Selena Vega is and how she hasn't had anything broken in a ring because of her very minute stature. I don't even say muscular because she's not that muscular. She's so tiny. She just looks breakable. I don't know. Um, there was a Carmella botch. Yeah, you knew that was going to happen. Bianca, uh, Krula, Krula presses Vega to the outside on top of the others. Then we almost had a Super Tower of Doom spot. Only spot I'd live to see with these matches. Uh, Colonel then tries to pin everyone. Yeah, the Riptide. So for Liv broke this up. KD on Vega. She got pulled out by Dewdrop. Liv Morgan takes advantage of this situation. Liv Morgan. Live life. Wins. It could just look out boshy though. Um, and when it's really obvious, it's kind of bad. That was a ham sandwich match. Then we had Austin Theory uh, back there in Big E. Um, yeah, Poth. Yeah, Big E just like slaps him silly. That, that was hilarious. Just those big freaking mitts of his going across the face of Austin Theory. That's funny. Then we had uh, Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. This starts off really as a hockey fight. Um, KO gets his clotheslines, then a senton. K Kevin Owens has big chest. Rollins actually had a headbutt. Again, remember the American headbutt is more forceful than the Canadian headbutt. So the, head, the American headbutt always wins. Rollins does make his comeback. Akeo gets counted out. He's upset. Big E was sitting ring, ringside, which was good to see. Oh, what was that show up, Saxton? That was hilarious. Um, yeah, that's something like they said that I think they caught that they sh weren't supposed to say. Then Akeo beats up Big E because Big E's like, yeah, I told you so. Kevin Owens snapped on this match overall. I don't know. I'm not a fan of Seth Rollins. Ham sandwich match. So for this, the 8th, remember, remember the 8th of November matches here on Raw. I'm in bed soon, she's, but just let me make, just let me talk about one more video. Then I can edit all this stuff probably tomorrow. Some other time. I don't know. I am feeling tired. It's busy today, man. But, um, yeah. This whole show. And now we're back here in the present. So I'm on the right week, at least, which is pretty good for me. Um, this is the November, uh, yeah, November 15th. Well, today, or yesterday's Raw. Yeah, depending what time zone you live in, I guess. Yeah, there's a biggie promo. Kevin Owens shows up. Um, why is it when Canadians, like Kevin Owens curses, they sound, so, they sound like they're being forced to say it? They sound kind of apologetic about it. Like, like it sounds like they're sorry for saying this. Uso show up. Riddle shows up. He tries to make the save. And then... Boo, Sonya Deville. She makes a match. Seth Rollins shows up, so you know there's going to be some shenanigans. There's going to be a holla, holla, player moment coming up. Because uh, it started off Biggie and Riddle versus the Usos. 
Uh, Big E stretches one of the Usos and punches him instead of slapping his ass. He punches him in the ribs, which is better. Usos, they show great teamwork together. Uh, Big E, the belly to belly. Belly, uh, belly to belly gets one of the Usos out of the ring. I forget which one it was. Um, he sends the Usos. He sent, then he sent that Uso to Seth. Seth then comes in the ring, clocks Riddle, and then Big E. Um, Us, one of the Usos, I'll say, is that Uso there? Yeah, I'll say Jay get, gets RKO'd when Randy Orton comes in for the save. If the dust is finished, baby, nobody wins, and it's a setup. So this is a ham sandwich of a match. So yeah, in the next segment, in the next match we have, we have Seth Rollins and the Usos taking on RK Bro and Big E. Um, Seth, I think, got potatoed. Because he was acting really weird. Riddle's been known to potato a few people. Uh, he might have sent him in the corner and said, yeah, deal with him for a few minutes. Seth didn't look happy about something, and he was rubbing his jaw really aw- really awkwardly more so than selling. So I don't know if Seth got potatoed by Riddle by accident. He got over it, at least. At least it, w- it, w- it was nowhere nearly as bad as a Charlotte Flair Nia Jax incident. Getting potatoed it happens every so often. You do slip, your you, time gets messed up. It just seemed to be like the first thing that you see is this. Uh, eh, that sticks out a little bit more. Then it's the stomps by Jay Uso. Uh, Biggie. Then she gets this first hot tag. It's the splash. It splashes one of the Usos on the apron as well. Uh, Usos and Seth. <laughs> Usos and Seth can't kind of beat up. Uh, Randy Orton a little bit, pull him off the ring, distract him. Riddle then gets the hot tag after a while, uh, gets everyone, uh, sent on to everyone in the ring. And of course, you can't have a tag match like this without your spot fest. Everyone has to do their move. Now Jimmy Uso eats the RKO. Um, but, but Biggie's in the ring. A little screwy finish there, but you know what? Seth and the Usos win. Not a bad match. Cheeseburger match. Kind of sets up things, and I'll I'll do my predictions video probably Thursday for this, and then see here. And then there was a little recap about stuff. I'll tell you what, Carmelo's tits are freaking huge. Like I don't know what surgeon she saw, but they're literally like a couple sizes too. Big than they should be. Because they're the most bulbous, fakest, silicone or saline infused boobies I've seen in a while. I've seen a few of them. A lot this weekend too. No, the ones I saw were on natural, but I should not I should not have been seeing those. But that's a whole other issue I'll rant and rave about. I know I'm going to bed soon. She really she wants to cuddle. Uh, then we have Kevin Steen faces and talks to Finn Balor. Ooh, might we see Prince Devitt come out? Yeah! And Kevin Prince Devitt versus Kevin Steen. That would be amazing. But our next match then was Bianca Belair versus Tamina. And oh my goodness, Tamina's hot. Ever since Tamina lost the Klingon outfit, Tamina looks sexy. And hot. And very cute, at least. Um, Bianca Belair and starts to take it to Tamina a little bit. However, Tamina, she's Samoan. Now, Tamina, the Samoan, actually goes Samoan on poor Bianca Belair. Again, Tamina, always in, in her back pocket, has the most lethal move in all of professional wrestling. That being... Why did you just do that, cheese bro? You're goofy. Cat just like nuzzle the pillow off the couch. Who knows? Um, but yeah, Tamina went all Simone. Remember in her back pocket, she always has the Simone headbutt, lethalist headbutt of all the headbutts available. Um, Bianca goes up and over after um, attempted belly to back suplex. Tamina could not hit the splash. 
Uh, Bianca Belair uh, uh, kind of tossed me into the uh, post. A uh, good kind of wrestling for a while. And then there was an impressive KOD. Yeah, when you can get a woman who's significantly bigger than you up on your shoulders like that and drop them down safely, that's pretty good. It's kind of funny because Bianca Belair did lose like an eye, a, a fake eyelash. That's funny. Dewdrop showed up. I don't know. They, they jaw jacked for a while. But yeah, Bianca Belair won this. I'll tell you what, it was a solid cheeseburger match. It was Becky Lynch came out, um, and Becky Lynch has a mommy nipples going on. Either that or it was really cold there. It's either really cold in Miami or she just got done breastfeeding. I don't, I don't know which. I shouldn't be saying stuff like that either. Yeah, Liv Morgan showed up. They, had, they, they yammered a little bit. Liv Morgan hit the arm drag on Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch looks done. Yeah, eventually they'll face each other. Uh, Real in the Streets Profits, they're just too goofy for words. Street Profits versus Alpha Academy. This was a darn good match. Um, uh, good rope running, classic arm drags. Ford and Chad Gable literally are amazing together. Um, Ford then just stares at Otis during the cover. Not He's not someone you want to necessarily poke at. I think. Um, and Chad Gable so technical. Street Profits team works is infallible. Otis is just the clubbering man. Just clotheslines everyone multiple times. Looks stiff, looks great. Um, Chad uses the... He, he rolls out of one maneuver. He goes into the, to the half, a deep half crab. That's great. Otis then splashes on the leg again. Limb isolation. Really good, smart tag team wrestling. Chad Gable is dragging through a level in the corner that just looks like it would actually tear the knee ligament. Otis then just no sells all the clotheslines by Montez Ford. That's nothing. Uh, he that hits the pop up slam. However, Otis is on the outside. Chad Gable hits a flying cross by, but then a float over by, Mon by Dawkins or Ford. I was shocked. I haven't seen a good cross body float over in a while. So I like that. Uh, Street Profits win. This was a good, fun match. Solid surf and turf match. And that's probably going to make up for this. That's probably the prelude to this match, which was Nikki Cross versus Lena Vega. Their total height combined is not going to equal 10 feet. Their heads just barely get to the top turnbuckle. Nikki goes crazy. She has a flying roll up, which always looks great. I just want to pour Nikki Cross. <laughs> oh, yeah, and to begin with, because Selena Vega's show short, the referees used to opening the rope in the middle of rope, used to sitting on the, in the middle of rope, lifting the other rope. Selena Vega, <laughs> she could barely get over the second row. She's like, you sat on the wrong rope. Stretch the wrong rope, so... Yeah, the referee is like, well, whatever. Like, I'm always used to doing it this way. I'm used to doing this for Charlotte Flair, who's like a good foot and a half taller than you are. Stop complaining. So is Charlotte Flair. Where is Charlotte, anyway? Charlotte's considering her future in AEW. Who knows? Or, I don't know. Woo! Bring it up. <laughs> like, only a Flair can... Woo! Uh, so yeah, Nikki and Zelina. Nikki goes for a flying rope. That's actually pretty cool to see. Kind of botchy on Vegas' part, but if your opponent's just as short as you are, I can see it being botchy. Uh, Nikki. Again, the senton, and then a backbreaker. That's pretty cool. Um, Vegas' head just barely gets to the turnbuckle. Um, Vega hit the Lucha Destroyer near the end. This was a quick match. A forgettable can of soup match. Then we had Carmella versus Rhea Ripley. Yeah, Carmella. Carmella's very hippie. 
and Carmela's outfit seems to be getting smaller and smaller. That and she has a huge pair of lungs. And her tits are just unnaturally rounded. So yeah. Um, kind of the kick sends... Oh, that one kick sent Rhea's head into the post. I have best plan or not. That looked great. Um, then Carmelo starts to rake, rake and do slaps to the back. That would be kind of nice. I'd like to get my back raked by Carmelo. Corey Graves gets his back racked by Carmelo all the time. Oh, yeah. I know what I put down. I know I can read my handwriting. I wonder if Carmelo is that much of a screamer in bed. Oh! I should not be mentioning stuff like that, but it's a wrestling show. I can mention whatever I want. Right, Cheese Pop? Cheese Pop, you're a good kitty cat. And I know we're going to bed really soon. Oh, yeah. Let's see, where was I? Um, and then eventually Carmela gets her back to rake. Rear is just returning the favor. Um, the Aussie headbutt. Nice. Oh, Rhea Ripley does such a pretty Northern Lights German suplex. And then Rhea eventually... I didn't realize she had an under a boobage tattoo. Hmm. That might affect my opinion of her. Yeah, she hit the riptide on Carmella. So Rhea Ripley wins. Vegas says, yeah, well, at least your friend won. Whatever that was. I didn't care about that. For the most part, this was a cheeseburger match. Rhea Ripley can actually carry a match pretty good. Ooh, I should be getting to bed soon. Like, seriously. Seth, Seth's in the back. He's told the, the bad guy to take his bags. Who's that skinny actor guy? Oh, I have to look his name up. Looked like him, though. He's like, yeah, don't wake the baby. Oh, that's the first time they've actually referenced Seth having a kid. In WWE. And then we had Kevin Steen versus Prince Devitt. The real... Rock and roller. Because you know what? Prince Devitt is too sweet for life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there we go. For life. That's. And uh, then you go back to old school Kevin Steen. Um, Steen versus Devitt, and, and Steen's just a brawler. Finn has some good combos, and he has the um, sling bait. He has the best looking sling bait because he seems like he flies a little bit more. He goes face first though into the ring apron. Um, Steen, the uh, spring back suplex, the spinning. Spinning back suplex. That was pretty cool. Almost like a blue blue thunder bomb almost. Uh, Kevin Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens was telling the spots throughout this match. I don't know why. Uh, trade trade kind of arm drags. Chaos gets face. Face gets planted in, into the um, apron itself. Prince Seven misses a coup de gras. Kevin Owens with a pop-up power bomb. Two count. Then he told him the spot. He said, yeah, we have to end this now. Stunner. That was it. Kind of disappointing for these two. Still, solid cheeseburger match. Seven minutes to get one hour of wrestling in for nine. Man, you guys are getting a super bonus tonight. We had AJ and Omos versus Dirty Dogs. I don't know. This was just a squash. Omos got in there. He threw Robert Root out. Picked up, dropped, dropped Dolph Ziggler on his back. The cat's going somewhere. Um, AJ hits the phenomenal forearm near tag team squash. Nothing else to say about that match. Ham sandwich of a match. Then we have Ray Mysterio versus Bobby Lashley. Ray wants a little vengeance. Um, vintage Ray Mysterio is the near 619. Uh, didn't get all of it. Then hits a sliding splash. And ouch! Ray got caught in the sense of the barricade. Uh, Bobby Lashley, the big clubbing clotheslines, definitely taking it to Rey Mysterio. You definitely know who the stronger of the two are. He does the one arm. He literally has Rey Mysterio up in his suplex position. He takes his one arm off, 
points at Donovan and says, yeah, your daddy's getting it. Boom! One arm delayed vertical suplex. I couldn't do that even with my nephews. I don't think I could do that with my cat. Much less another grown human being. That's crazy. Uh, Rey Mysterio tries to get a couple of quick things in. Tries to go for some a quick series of 619s. Well, actually repositions himself in front of the hard camera. Unless you know wrestling, like that would just be like, yeah, you just went from one side to the other. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, and then the strength of Lashley just muscles Rey Mysterio in, into the hurt lock. Bobby Lashley wins. Cheeseburger match. Then Adam Pierce comes out. It's like, huh? What's going on? Ray's off the team. Says, Ray, you're a loser. You're a loser, Ray Mysterio. Because in the time of chimpanzees, I was a monkey. Butin and my torch I'm about to get funky with a plastic eyeball. Spray paint the vegetables. Stock car racer with a loser and a cruise control. Babies in Reno with a vitamin C. Sitting on the love seat. Something, whatever. I forget the rest of it. But yeah, he called Ray Mysterio a loser. Um, Austin Theory then beats him up. Says, you know what, Austin Theory? I like your moxie. Urine. So Austin Theory's a replacement. The show... Definitely a cheeseburger show. And that's it. So you folks, you got the 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 bone the, the super condensed version. You got nine hours or three raws into one show and only about one hour long. Probably less than that, because I spent a lot of time thanking people. And to thank people, yes, I'd like to thank you, my viewing audience. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, a couple things about this week. Thursday, I'm having a pre-Thanksgiving dinner with my friend up in Jacksonville, so I probably won't be here for Impact Wrestling. I will be doing, though, a predictions video for both Hard to Kill, which is Saturday, which I may or may not see because of my work schedule, and SummerSlam, or um, Survivor Series, which is this Sunday. Um, I'm also going to do another uh, review show for NXT because it's still spa week, so I can still kind of tranquil a little bit. Wednesday after work, I have to get a whole bunch of stuff done. There's no show that day. Yep, and then Friday, I'll be doing the AEW Rampage because an hour is easy to do while you eat pizza. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm going to, because I've done this part, I just have to do the hard part now. Or if this is a hard part, I have to do the long part, long boring part. And this should be going up soon.